Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. start this lecture with thought process imparting knowledge to others helps not only the initiate the lighting of others inner fire but sustains your own fire so in the last lecture we basically looked at uh, quenching diameter and quenching distance and also uh, derive relationship for a quenching diameter and try to relate to the both the flame thickness and the laminar burning velocity and today we will be looking at the flammability limits as I had told you that there will be some limit mixtures uh, in which uh, beyond which the flame will not propagate. In other words, there is a limit mixture within which uh, flame can propagate uh, for a certain range of fuel air ratio. Right. So, um, how to determine the flammability limit experimentally is a very important question. So, generally what happened that uh, people use the vertical glass tube of 1.2 meter length and 50 mm of ID. Why they have gone for 50 mm? Of course, this is the American standard what people use across the globe and uh, because of fact that if you use a smaller diameter what will happen? There will be some heat losses, right? Uh, at if uh, the heat losses is uh, uh, considerable, then you will not get the right properties related to flammability limits, right? So, that is the reason why it is being used 50 mm, where so that you do not have uh, that problem of heat losses, right? And 1.2 meter length being uh, so, what is being done? You fill this uh, mixed uh, tube, which is uh, must be transparent tube, right? Or if it is not transparent, then one has to put a sensor so that uh, you can uh, locate the flame. It will be mixed with the uh, certain proportion of fuel and oxidizer. So these are being mixed first, right? Then what will happen? You ignite the flame at the bottom then there will be kernel which will be moving right the flame will be moving with certain velocity of v f and it will be passing through and then uh, keep in mind that there will be uh, because the hot gases will be on the where bottom right because it is coming from here so if it is bottom it will be trying to expand and then moving but if it is the top then anyway it will be going it would not be affecting your flame right. So, uh, this if it will travel at least half of the distance right the flame uh, per a particular mixtures then we call it flammable if it would not travel uh, much but it will be initiated on the ignition and it will extinguish then we call it as a basically limit mixture that means it has reached the limit beyond that you cannot really uh, make the flame to propagate. And keep in mind that the ignition source right or ignition energy must be good enough. Suppose you are not giving enough energy then it is not igniting you cannot call it as a flammability limit ok. The flame has to be established and it has to uh, you know it may not propagate but it has to be established fully right. So, that is very important of course, uh, the similar the ignition limit is also there right. So, mixture is said to be flammable only when it travels half of the tube 1.2 meter uh, that means 0 0.6 meter it should travel at least. But uh, also there is a some other apparatus uh, which is being used nowadays that is the chamber combustion bump and other thing, but this is the standard one which is being used uh, throughout the globe. And the last diameter tube is preferred as it provides consistent result is free from the quenching right that I have already discussed. And uh, direction of flame propagation affect the flammability limit 
because of fact that um, this is uh, being it is subjected to the uh, buoyancy effect right because the hot gases will be trying to go up that will be accelerating there will be expansion but in the case if it is let us say uh, there is a tube here and you are igniting the mixtures right here this is uh, fuel plus oxidizer then you know, the what will happen flame will be traveling toward this direction this is the downward propagation of flame and in that case what will happen the hot gases these are the hot gases right which will be going up it would not be affecting the flame propagation. So, therefore, that is why the limit for upward uh, propagation uh, are slightly wider than those of the downward direction propagation that you will have to keep in mind. And uh, beside this uh, if you look at uh, this one like uh, the temperature effect uh, for example, T 1 is here these are the uh, lean uh, flammability limit right this uh, lean flammability limit and this is uh, let us say this is your uh, reach flammability limit and between this lean flammability limit and the reach flammability limit this will be flammable that means flame can propagate and uh, flame you can establish flame beyond this thing beyond this uh, LFL uh, and RFL that is reach flammability you cannot really uh, establish a flame whatever the amount of initial ignition energy you give right. And when you increase the temperature of uh, the mixtures right like uh, what will happen there is a uh, change in the limit uh, both the lean uh, flammability limit and reach flammability. In other words, it is broadened limits are broadened with increase in temperature because of fact that the laminar burning velocity will be increasing, right. But if you look at the pressure effect, what will happen? If the pressure effect is to reduce the laminar burning velocity, naturally the flammability limit will be narrowed down, it is only be broadened like the temperature that you should keep in mind. And uh, as I told the flammable limits varies almost linearly with the temperature. And let us uh, look at uh, some of the data right uh, the fuel uh, oxidizer this is and stoichiometric this is the uh, methane air and uh, stoichiometric 9.5 percent. The lean flammability limit is 5 and reach flammability is 15 that is the percentage by volume right and whereas, the stoichiometric percent of fuel is 9.5 right. And uh, ethane if you look at it is uh, little narrowed down as compared to the uh, methane and if you go to the propane it is also being narrowed down. And CO air it is wide enough like hydrogen air also very wider range the flame uh, the hydrogen air and the uh, carbon monoxide having a wider range of flammability limit that means it can be flame can be established between these two range. So, therefore, one has to be very careful in uh, handling the hydrogen and also CO particularly hydrogen one has to because little bit uh, fuel being leaked out of the cylinder it will mix with air then it will be flammable right. So, uh, if you look at that way one can give a relationship because uh, some people have given how to estimate this uh, uh, flammability limit lean flammability limit lean flammability limit uh, one can find out at uh, as I told in the last lecture it will be dependent on the temperature right. So, uh, that temperature uh, you can look at LFL L at uh, 25 degree Celsius is uh, 1 minus 0 0.75 this is at T this T will be at uh, basically 25 degree Celsius minus 25 and divided by delta S c delta S c is your heat of combustion right. 
and uh, this is RFL will be similar RFL and these are semi empirical results right uh, and uh, RFL at 25 degrees Celsius uh, 1 plus 0 0.75 T minus 25 keep in mind that this will be delta SC Hey, this is uh, being used uh, basically within certain range of the things. And uh, um, <coughs> let us uh, look at effect of pressure on the limit mixtures, right. So, uh, if you look at the pressure is given here, pressure plotted by the different and this is for generalized, I will be showing for the methane. And you can see that in the lean side, the, there will be not much change, you know, the slope is almost, uh, you know, uh, negligibly small here. But whereas, the risk side, there is a, a much change in the pre, uh, equivalence ratio, right, with the change in pressure, right. So, uh, the, that means, pressure has uh, significant effect on the flammability limit, but lean side is not affected significantly by the pressure and reach limit becomes much wider with uh, increase in pressure. And uh, let us look at natural gas, yes this is a general, it is uh, not, data is not given, this is a general trend, right, what people are saying, particularly for hydrocarbon air right this is hydrocarbon air mixture but hydrogen and co the other fuel is not but here it is given natural if you can look at this is the lean side right it is being plotted at a different pressure the data right if you look at this is almost remaining constant it is not constant it's not it's changing but very very small change and because of fact what people are saying it is affected by the first order chemical kinetics right uh, the order of reaction is faster uh, first order reaction whereas here this is uh, reach limit reach limit is affected by the second order reaction and of course when it, the uh, pressure is increasing that became a faster so it is remaining constant this range you know kind of thing and keep in mind that uh, the flammability limit is governed by the kinetics right unlike in stoichiometric other like these are governed by the kinetics. And uh, we will be uh, looking at basically uh, how to handle the mixture of gases. For example, you are having methane, uh, you know the lean flammability limit and rich flammability limit and let us say propane you know. Now, if there is a mixture of gases, fuel right and also air and this data is experimented there, you need to find out what will be the lean flammability limit or the rich flammability limit. So, uh, by that actually uh, one person has given uh, a you know relationship, this known as Lee Chatelier rule right, which will be using for that. <coughs> so, uh, let this is basically uh, Lee Chatelier Chatelier rule. It is known as LCR. Is used to estimate uh, limit mixtures. of the multiple fuels, right, fuel, uh, you know, um, air mixtures if it is there, mixture. So, uh, this will be valid particularly uh, for the, um, you know, hydrocarbons, right, and uh, this uh, formula is like that, L F L is equal to 100 x k divided by L f L k is a very simple formula k is equal to 1 to n right x is the basically mole fractions of the 
constituent uh, fuel right and similarly i can have rfl is equal to 100 divided by uh, xk into rflk right this is uh, let's say 1 and this is 2 and keep in mind that x is where x is the mole fraction uh, of kth species. A species means basically fuel you can say. Okay. And um, keep in mind that this is uh, not valid, this relationship uh, not valid for what? For hydrogen, CO and ethylene. Generally hydrocarbon, this is this leach atelier rule is being valid, people have found out. So, what we will do? We will take an example just to illustrate this point. If the fuel consisting of fifty five per cent by volume, of course, this is methane and thirty five per cent of propane, uh, sorry, uh, ethane C two S six and uh, 10 right this would be 10 10 percent of c3 h8 and of course with a right uh, determined uh, lean flammability limit or lean limit of mixture fuel and oxidizer by Lee Chatelier rule LCR right. So, what we will have to do? We will have to basically find out uh, equation 2 solution. If you look at what are the things are known? known uh, x c h 4 is uh, you can say that uh, 55 okay so uh, we can find out LFL lean flammability limit 100 divided by XCH4 divided by LFL CH4 plus XC2S6 LFL C2S6 plus XC3H8 LFL C3H8. Right. If I substitute these values, you will find out basically uh, 55 by 5 because these are all in percentage, you will have to take care of the unit. This LFL is in percentage and these are also in percentage, right? Plus 35 by 2.8. plus 10 divided by uh, 2.1. So, you will get 3.54 percentage right, which is a very simple rule one can use particularly for designing you know purposes and which might be having some error, but that is not much maybe 5 to 10 percent error might be there because you are just using these values and curves right. So, uh, having talked about this flammability limit. 
uh, how to calculate for a, a mixture of fuel provided you know individual uh, lean flammability limit or the rich flammability limit with data then only you can find. So, look at this uh, flame stabilization because uh, what are the condition for the flame stabilization? We have already seen earlier that if the local velocity right uh, of the fluid is equal to S L like local laminar burning velocity the flame will be stabilized. For example, if the flame is here which is moving with a S L and the fluid is moving with a something V F it is possible only when V F is equal to S L right. That is a very important thing that means local gas velocity is equal to local burning velocity right. These are all locally if there is a gas velocity will be higher right if it is uh, vf is greater than sl what will happen the flame will be moving toward that right flame will be going away right <coughs> and a conical flame will be established for example if i take this is a basically a tube through which the fuel plus uh, air is going and then this is your flame surface right. See the flame will be moving uh, at a velocity S L at a local surface and it I, I have shown you in the earlier that the laminar burning velocity changes across this flame ok. In certain region it will be remaining constant here, but in this region it will be uh, higher and this region it will be because this is the wall region, this is the wall stabilized right <coughs> which will be there. So, and if it is a certain values right, if it will exceed this velocity if I take this some average velocity of course, there will be velocity profile right there will be velocity profile which will be coming over here right something like that. This is the parabolic profile because it is a tube and which you have given enough distance and um, that will be uh, giving like if it is certain velocity this velocity is increasing for the same fuel air mixture if you are increasing the flow rate right if it is uh, flow rate is increasing what will happen the flame will be trying to destabilize right let us say this is the things and flame may be lifted up right somewhere right there will be lift up this is lift off height. this is known as lifted flame. If this flow rate is go on increasing further, so what will happen? Flame will go away and then after that flame will be going away from the burn that is known as blow off or blow out right. But suppose you uh, think that for the same air mixture if the Q dot is decreasing further, so then what will happen? Flame which is established here, right? Flame will come back here with the decreasing this thing, flame will be moving toward this, and when you decrease it further, right, what will happen? Flame will be coming over here. Flame will be moving towards this one, this is your flame. And under this condition, it is basically the flashback. When the flame is inside, this is known as flashback. As I told that uh, earlier, the flame lift uh, gets lifted up, stabilized downstream of the flame, right? This is the lifted flame, right? <coughs> and with further increase in velocity, this will happen. The flame will blow out and uh, the flame will be blowing out and this is known as blow off limit 
and if the flame velocity is below the burning velocities of the laminar flame uh, propagates into the burner and gets quenched and this is known as the flame flashback. right so this is the flame which is basically known as the flashback now let us understand what is happening in the flame stabilization during the rim because what is happening here in this case the flame this is the wall right the rim of the burners right this is the wall uh, uh, rim right rim of the burners uh, that is holding the flame right and it also the heat losses will take place then flame may quench back because once it flashes back uh, if heat losses are more then only it will uh, quench otherwise it will propagate and that is dangerous right flame should not enter into it may uh, devastate the things right <coughs> because uh, uh, before this fuel air mixture will be there in a very big chamber uh, explosion may occur right that one has to avoid so now let us look at that uh, what really how does the flame stabilize what is the reason uh, if i consider this is your uh, burner rim and that helps in stabilizing the flame and this is your velocities right v of the fluid right or mixture and this is the flame which will be moving you know locally it will be moving right with sl this is a perpendicular that sl if in this place it is in this region if it is higher then what will be happening in this case in this region if you look at sl sl is high greater than the v mixture then what will happen flame will be entering into the burner right so that is known as the flashback are you getting but here the at this point right the sl is equal to v mixture this is of course the fuel plus air i can say just to discuss it can be oxidized so then this is known as stable flame flame is stabilized at the burner rim right this is your rim so in this case what is happening the in this region the velocity is very high which was the v mixture is greater than sl so therefore the flame is going away right and that is known as c blow out so uh, <coughs> i have already explained this thing just i am repeating again at the burner rim flow velocity is equal to the uh, burner burning velocity flame is likely to get stabilized here heat loss and radical loss of the burner rim is the cause of flame stabilization okay that means what happen when the flame will be near to the wall there will be some of the losses will be occurring because the radical uh, loss will be there heat loss will be there laminar velocity will can be obtained at the low renaults number right uh, particularly when it is and the, when the flow velocity is uh, less than the burning velocity sl right flame enters into burner leading to flashback i have already explained this thing this is your flashback 
and at critical condition the velocity gradient let us say at the flashback will be when r tending towards capital R. If I consider this is a tube, if I consider and then this will be and is basically r at any look. So, there is a tending to r is equal to r means it is at the wall right what you are considering dv by d and this is corresponding to mixture velocity or the fluid velocity whatever of the mixture. So, we know the because we velocity parabolic profile So, therefore, we can say V is equal to n small r square for a r is the tube radius. If you look at it's basically minus 1 by 4 mu delta L is the length of length of tube in which this is there and this is uh, you will be knowing. So, now let us uh, look at uh, look at that uh, how we can relate this and evaluate this g f. <coughs> As I told that delta p is the pressure difference across the tube length mu is the fluid viscosity and uh, if you look at the flow rate volumetric flow rate is nothing but your uh, r 2 pi r v I am considering v as the fluid velocity and d r and when you uh, put this v over here right you will get 0 to r 2 pi r n r square minus r square d r when you integrate all those things you will get basically uh, ok let me do that maybe it will take little time 2 pi n I can take it out and uh, integrate that thing and then I will get r r square divided by 2 minus r 4 right by 4 and uh, when I put this 0 to r I will get basically um, pi n uh, r 4 r 4 by 2 I will get ok. That means, I can write down basically n is equal to q 2 q dot divided by pi r so, if I uh, this g f if I look at it uh, is equal to limit r tending towards r d v by d r I can use this again this expression v is equal to n r square on this thing I will get is equal to 2 r n and if I will put this thing to uh, sorry this will be uh, r tending towards 0. So, this will be 2 capital R n and n this is nothing but your 2 q dot by pi r square right. That is basically I can express in terms of average velocity right. Okay. So, uh, if you look at q dot uh, basically I can say V average velocity pi by r square area cross sectional area if I take a tube here right I can take a velocity profile which is average. This is basically parabolic profile right, but now I am considering into average because that will be good one this is V average right and uh, this is your uh, basically 2 r right the cross sectional area will be pi r square right. <coughs> and you putting that thing you will be putting 2 4 
r in q dot will be v average pi r square divided by pi r square r 4 right pi r 4 it will be yes it will be 4. So, this will be cancel it out it will be 2 pi will cancel it out and the r also will cancel it out I will get basically 4 v average by r is equal to 8 v average by d. That means, I can get basically g f is equal to 8 v average by d. So, if you look at this gradient, I can obtain very simply conducting experiment average velocity and diameter if I know, I can get this uh, values. This is the diameter of of t u. So, uh, similarly you can get uh, the, the gradient velocity gradient for the blow out also right and which is happens to be similar in nature I will leave that as a derivation for you to do that. Okay. <coughs> now, uh, at the flashback as I told okay. this g f is equal to 8 v average I think uh, all right this is 8 v average divided by d. So, if you look at this uh, velocity gradient uh, both the flashback and blow out you can see this is for LPG air premix measure and uh, uh, it is considered for the 15 mm diameters that is percentage of LPG is plotted here. You can see that this region you know if it will go beyond it will be flashback and this region is a stable region and it will go beyond this is the blow off region kind of thing right. So, um, and uh, if you look at the whole regime of the Bunsen type of flame where the tube will be there. You can see that in this region you can see that is the flow velocity being plotted over the fuel oxidized oxygen ratio is the blow off which will be occurring here right. And uh, this is the region below which the flashback like uh, flashback will be occurring in this region. This will be seated flame and uh, this is the lifted flame what I have talked about and this lifted flame will be oscillating that means when you are uh, making this flame here let us say this is a lifted flame when you reduce the velocity right this is let us say it is having some v average here this is having some v average right. Uh, then what happened flame will be uh, going up and coming up depending on whether it is changing v average little bit right. So, this is region and then flame is lifted and then, then it will be of course, when you go beyond it will be blow out. And uh, this when you decrease this v average velocities you can flame can be coming back and sitting over here when the v average is reduced this is basically drop back region. So, with this uh, I will uh, stop over here in the next lecture we will be basically discussing about the ignition and uh, ignition energy and other aspect we will be looking at it. Thank you very much.